Hello and welcome once more to Red Gaming Tech, my name is Amata, today is the 7th of July and this time I have some news for you regarding Dishonored 2, as when he was speaking to Mashable, the co-director Harvey Smith elaborated on the ways that the two characters, that being of course Emily and Corvo, actually differ from each other, and it is not just an aesthetic choice. Now when Dishonored 2 does begin, you will be in control of Emily, but after the prologue, the game offers you a choice as to whether to continue as Emily or step into the shoes of Corvo. And once you've made the choice, you can't sw switch back. And of course, the decision will shape the experience of the game, even though the two characters do go on the same missions, which would make sense. Different things would happen to different people at the end of the day. They would go about things in different ways. And that, of course, ties into the gameplay. As according to Harvey, the two characters do differ from each other in terms of gameplay. And he said, quote, Emily fights with a little more f finesse than Corvo does, whereas Corvo has the very classic possession, rat swarm, blink, Emily has far reach, shadow walk, mesmerize, these powers that nobody has hard for. And apparently, far reach works a little bit differently to the blink power that we all saw in Dishonored 1. It has p p players shooting the darkness-like tendril that we saw in the trainer, which pulls, pulls them towards target rather than being a sort of form of teleportation. Now, you've probably already figured that out. It kind of was shown a little bit in the trailer. Obviously, the trailer was very fast-paced, but you kind of saw how the tendrils reached out and kind of pulled Emily towards targets. And you basically won't be able to use it in the same way as Blink, and Emily will actually be visible through the movement. So I'd imagine that... If someone is sort of tracking your movement and shooting where you're going to be rather than where you are, they might actually be able to damage you while you're still in transit. It does have its advantages though. And he went on to say, quote, You can stick to walls, you can yank somebody towards you and assassinate them in mid-air. So you have these synced assassinations in mid-air. It begins to feel different and it adds momentum. You can run and jump and it has rope physics to it. Now, of course, and it as well as the gameplay differences, which are probably going to be much, much more than what Harvey has discussed here, both Emily and Corvo are fully voiced, which of course means you get a different perspective on what's happening. And Smith finished up by saying, quote, Corvo's an old, older guy. He's coming home for the first time to Sakonos. Emily is like an empress outlaw in the wrong, and she's young. She's 25. There's a different theme in the narrative sense, in the literary sense. Now, I have linked the full interview in the description below this video, and I suggest you read it if you're at all interested anymore in his comments regarding Dishonored 2, as he talks quite a bit about world building, as well as their decision to make Emily a playable protagonist. As I said, the link is in the description. If you wish to read it, I suggest you do. It is a very interesting read. I myself don't know who I'm going to pick. I loved Corvo, I even cosplayed him at MCM Comic Con a couple of years ago, I believe. No, last year? Last year, yeah, last year. And, you know, would like to return to his character, but at the same time, Emily seems really interesting as well, and I'm curious to see how these changes to gameplay actually come into action and how they're actually going to change your strategy. I actually had a low, uh, low chaos, help if I could speak, playthrough complete for Corvo Dishonored 1. So, I'd be curious to see how well you can pull off a low chaos playthrough, that's assuming chaos is still a thing, with Emily. I wonder if it's easier, harder, mm, don't know. Given that she has more finesse, maybe a, bit, a little bit easier, I don't know. We'll have to see, of course, but I'm definitely intrigued, and it might actually be worth two playthroughs to see how well the two characters actually differ. Anyway, that is me done for this video, but thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.